Gear Tilted back with another Ashes of Creations video discussion. Uh, this time I want to discuss PvP or player versus player. And I think it's important, first of all, uh, for people who might be new, we'll make sure we're all on the same page, just to discuss what PvP is. So, PvP or player versus player is a broad term. But in essence, what it means is a multiplayer element to a video game that provides interactive conflict within a game between human players uh, as opposed to PvE which is against NPCs and depending on the implementation PvP can be very controversial due to usually the risks associated uh, there's usually vast differences between players and depending on the game it can incentivize higher level players or more experienced players to attack or grief lower level players to secure victory uh, usually also secure their loot so the issue at the forefront of people's mind is how this is going to be implemented in ashes of creation so i just wanted to break down the current state of it what the developers had planned for it and hopefully kind of um, inform you guys on what's to come so first of all it's important to understand the developer's standpoint, how they want PvP to be in their game. So from the wiki, the forums, the interviews and updates, they want to see PvP as a catalyst for change in Ashes of Creation. So it's going to be a mainstay of the system. So for those of you who may not want any PvP in Ashes of Creation, or it might turn you off, you need to consider that. They want it to be one of the main systems in their game that drives the progression. They want it to be meaningful, they want it to have purpose, and in their words, such as with caravan battles or a conflict for kings and queens. So the following are all the different types of PvP content they have planned, and a little blurb about each one. So uh, in open world battlegrounds, um, there's PvP, this is not instance PvP, or it occurs around specific events. Instance PvP would be like in World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy XIV, uh, where you queue into a specific dungeon or specific raid, and then that's what you go play. And then when you're done, you instance out of it and go back to the open world, as opposed to what they want, which is open world battlegrounds. This is stuff that just happens all the time. So first up is caravans. So caravans are something that players start it transfers personal goods quest items supplies for castles or nodes uh, it creates an open pvp zone that flags players in it for combat and we'll talk more about flagging later when you walk up players can't see the content of the caravan but before they decide to you know either help attack or help defend it but there's going to be some visual hints there'll be like some resources kind of laying about or some gold falling out of a chest so you can if you pay attention there's some context clues as to what is actually going to be in the chest when players come up they'll get the to state their intention they can either attack it ignore it defend it and it should require a group of people to successfully attack a caravan. You shouldn't be able to just have one player just come in and clean house. They want this to be a living thing. Um, there'll be incentive to attackers and defenders, and their successes and their failures will be tracked and provide reward for players down the line based on their history. So if you're always protecting caravans, you should get some rewards later on down the line if you choose that path and same thing for attacking caravans and if you do manage to destroy a caravan it drops the portions of the goods it was transporting uh, caravan components and certificates for goods that you can go redeem at a node so yeah caravans seem pretty cool um, something that's flexible something that's important to the players to progress the nodes and castles I, I think you can see a whole lot of kind of role playing around this right you can hire a guild specifically to protect your caravan or you can hire a guild specifically to attack a caravan that you really want. So uh, I think it's pretty flexible. It sounds pretty awesome. Next up is castle sieges. So there, as of right now, is only five guild castles in Ashes of Creation. And these guilds will participate in sieges to try and occupy one. And the siege, the goal is to have it occur once a month with a minimum of 250 players versus 250 players. Their hope especially with the uh, upgrade in an engine that they just had, is to increase it to 500 versus 500, and that is massive. 
Um, they're considering implementing locations within the otherwise open world um, where specific groups can participate in smaller battles that will affect the overall outcome of the sieges. Uh, maybe capture a specific checkpoint so uh, their defenses will build slower or something along those lines. And this is kind of hand in hands with node sieges. Uh, it's different but similar. Um, it'll enable players to destroy a node because only one node in an area is going to be able to get to a certain tier. So if one node gets to tier 5, the surrounding nodes can't get that high. So if you want your node that you live at or that your guild is in um, to advance and get to that level 5, right? you want your military node to get to tier 5 instead of their research node, then you have to siege their node and try and destroy it and bring it down so that you can uh, upgrade yours, which is pretty cool. Again, they want PvP to be a catalyst for change in, with the players. Next up is Guild Wars. So this is still in the design stage. They haven't quite got this one down yet, uh, but the overall goal is for Guild Wars to be objective-based with risk for each side. So there's going to be definitive victory conditions, uh, based on the level of the guilds and the assets that they currently have. Uh, objectives will spawn in the world based on what assets they have. Uh, some objectives will be routine. You just go capture this point. Uh, but sometimes you might have to steal a quest item that they had just received from a raid. Or um, capture a location based on the new guild hall that they just got. Or a particular guild member may become wanted and have a bounty placed on their head and become powerful, then you have to go take them out. So they're trying to liven it up and make it more than just, hey, run in this direction and cast some spells until you win, uh, which I like. And then Hunting Grounds, which are open world PvP corruption enabled areas. Uh, that's going to be most of the map. So anywhere that you can gather resources, whether it be monsters, NPCs, or um, collectible resources like ore, wood, stuff like that, uh, there's going to be hunting grounds there. And two parties could start a conflict over those resources. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you also have naval PvP, which they haven't gotten into very much yet. Um, arenas, which I think we all have an idea what an arena is. You win, you fight in a very static uh, area. Duels, you know, 1v1. Uh, and then they also have bounty hunting which players can become a bounty hunter through a quest in a military node. I think it has to be a level 4 military node. And bounty hunters get this pathfinding ability that lets them reveal corrupted players on their map, which we're about to talk about corrupted players in a minute. And the better of a bounty hunter you are and the more you use this skill, the better it becomes and the more you can pinpoint the location. Um, this will flag the bounty hunter to the corrupted player and corrupted players may kill bounty hunters without additional corruption score. So uh, we'll talk more about the flagging here in a minute, but just know that if you're into bounty hunting, you want to punish some bad guys, it's there for you. So uh, that was kind of a lot, and there's a lot of different reasons to PvP. Not just modes that you queue into, like arenas and duels, but actual reasons to PvP. You have to get your goods and your caravan to the next location. You have to um, siege this node so that your own node can grow. There's reason to do it, which I think is going to keep people engaged over the long term. Okay, so I just talked a bit about corruption and flagging. You may be thinking, what the heck is he talking about? Well, fret not. The corruption system is being implemented to deter people from griefing one another or spawn camping one another. The developers want PvP to be meaningful, as I mentioned, uh, but not turn the world into a big gank box. All players start as what's called a non-combatant, and as you can see from the chart that's up on screen, there's three levels of flagging based on what took place. So if a non-combatant fights a combatant, then they will become a combatant. If a combatant attacks a non-combatant, they become corrupted. And being corrupted is meant to be a punishment. Corruption multiplies your death penalties, and being corrupted can reveal your location of bounty hunters. Non-corrupted players can attack corrupted players without penalty. And it takes 60 seconds to log out while corrupted. So you can't just attack somebody, get corrupted, and dip out. Um, it's important to note that 
more corruption is gained depending on the level disparity between the attacker and defender. And there will be some quests to remove corruption, but the primary way to lose corrupted status is to die. And multiple deaths may be needed to remove all your corruption depending on how far you went. Um, from what I've seen, what I've heard, been talking to people, it's very similar to Lineage 2's flagging system. So if you want to see it in action, that's a good place to start your research. This brings with it a concern that I've seen repeated a couple times. I hope this doesn't go overlooked, and I really hope I'm misunderstanding it, uh, but I haven't had anybody tell me otherwise so far, and I tried, believe me. A player who becomes a combatant, so someone who attacks a non-combatant becomes a combatant, is only a combatant for 90 seconds. So in theory, a player could attack a combatant, become a combatant themselves, and then wait 90 seconds to do it again and just completely avoid being corrupted and completely avoid the punishment that's supposed to go with it. Now I thought surely like this can't be true, that's so ridiculous. Uh, I scoured the forums, the wikis, uh, asked questions and I can't find anything that says otherwise. Everybody that's talked to me has pretty much said that yep after 90 seconds you go away. Um, I know the developer said, uh, I think it was Steven himself, said uh, that 90 seconds feels like a long time. So there might be some context that I'm missing as far as what's actually going to take place within those 90 seconds. Um, but it seems to me to be a very large oversight. And uh, I would hate, if the corruption is meant to be a punishment, I would hate for there to be a, a way around it. Um, maybe even if you go into corrupted status, after 90 seconds you go back to a non-combatant, but you still get corruption points. And so at a certain point, there is no going back. So um, I'm not sure if that's how it's implemented. Um, we haven't actually seen it live yet. I haven't really seen it tested yet. Uh, so we'll just have to, have to wait and see. It is clear that the developers want PvP to be a staple in Ashes of Creation. There's no denying it. Ashes of Creation will have PvP. And every person is just going to have to decide if that's something they're willing to sign up for or not. Uh, PvP can bring with it some of the best moments you can have in a video game, especially MMOs. But you have to find the right balance with the irritation. So as we get into this next alpha, as we get into the beta, I'm sure they'll be looking to test these features, make sure they're balanced, ensure they get it correct. I just wanted to bring it up as a point, give some feedback, uh, and we can reapproach this topic if need be. So that's all I have for you today, guys. Uh, my referral link is up on screen if you want to register for an account on Adjective Creation website. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe. If you feel I missed anything, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time.